appreciate you uh, braving the, the, the weather and the, the winter to, to come see a little of me. Um, uh, seeing some new faces here, so it's always great to, uh, to meet new folks. Uh, for those of you that may not know me, my name is RJ Thompson. I'm an assistant professor of graphic and interactive design in the Department of Art um, here at Youngstown State. And um, I'm glad you're here because I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, this campaign and just exactly how it came to be. Um, this has been a, a project that's been a, a long time coming. Um, I kind of have to start back in 2012 um, with a particular professional experience I had in Pittsburgh. So uh, the, well, at the time it was called the Urban Design Center of Pittsburgh. And, and one of their goals was to uh, help revitalize uh, the city where it needed it. Okay? Um, part of the things that they would do, fundraising, grant writing, um, they would do a lot of promotion and advertising to get uh, to get exposure on these uh, these areas that needed revi excuse me revitalization and one of the <clears throat> one of the really smart things that they had done was they offered a competition called um, connecting art and urban connectivity and this particular presentation was for uh, young professionals of which I am one and um, myself and my employees at the time because I was running my own agency. Uh, in downtown Pittsburgh, we decided, you know what, we're going we're gonna to jump in on this competition and hopefully uh, have a really great experience from it. So the, um, the, the point of it was to sort of take a look at the north side neighborhoods of Pittsburgh, uh, specific, specifically within city limits, and uh, sort of redefine and reshape the experience that people were having there. Um, how can we attract people to move into this neighborhood? How can we attract businesses to move in and, you know, <clears throat> pardon me, increase tourism and really cast a more positive light on the north side neighborhoods? And uh, myself and my staff, we came up with a brand identity for the north side. And um, Leslie, you've seen this graphic before uh, in the shape. It's essentially, it looks like a honeycomb. And the honeycomb had this very, very elaborate but specific metaphor uh, regarding connectivity of people, places, businesses, things, and mostly experiences. Um, I was not fortunate enough to win this competition. However, I was fortunate enough to be awarded People's Choice. So uh, the judges uh, did not particularly think that my work was going to be the, the, the winner, to say the least. But the people have spoken, and that means more to me than anything. And uh, the work was celebrated at the Warhol Museum. I got to show my work there, and a lot of um, influencers in the city were able to come in and have conversations with all of these great ideas that uh, the people in this competition came up with. And one of the things that uh, I really got taken away with was, oh my God, like, this solution was very well received. How cool would it be as a, as a practicing graphic designer, as a student of design, and a lover of this discipline to rebrand a neighborhood or rebrand a community? Um, just a phenomenal experience. Uh, I think for myself and a lot of my students, the way that we look at design uh, as a career, it mostly relates to job satisfaction, uh, not necessarily the salaries. We are artists at our heart. We create because we have to. Uh, it's, it's something we are compelled to do. It's not something that we just do during the nine to five. Um, and the, the opportunity to have a billboard and then, well, maybe I rebrand a program. So the, the, the more experience I get in being able to define something, the better. And in this case, wow, I could rebrand an entire neighborhood. Blew me away. I was, I was immediately uh, intrigued. And that particular desire to do a project like this never really went away. Um, and I didn't pursue opportunities in regards to, uh, you know, this, this desire to rebrand a community. This just happened to fall into place. It was serendipity. Um, the, uh, the Center for Urban and Regional Studies here on campus received a, <clears throat> pardon me, a, uh, a massive federal economic development grant to provide uh, a significant amount of research, uh, data generation, 
uh, on just exactly how to re revitalize this city even more than what it has been experiencing. Um, as part of that were the, the design and delivery of marketing materials that would aid in those efforts. And um, I saw this as the opportunity to really have a, a strong influence on this place that I love. For those of you that don't know me, I do not live here. I did not grow up here. Um, I am a complete outsider. Um, you know, what's interesting is I grew up in a town called Youngsville, near another town called Warren, but not Youngstown or Warren in Ohio. Um, but uh, I, my first year here, I was a temp, and I decided that I wanted to really make it work here because I was able to create some really great programs uh, and experiences for my students much, much more quickly than I would have at a school in Pittsburgh. I taught at Carnegie Mellon and that's practically impossible uh, to get something up and running very, very quickly like <coughs> design works, which I can foray into momentarily. Um, so the ability to, to create great things here and to do it on a very quick level uh, was really inspiring to me. So uh, part of the uh, part of the project was to develop, you know, some of the, 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 the basic things. Well, if you can make a few flyers, maybe some posters, maybe a small publication featuring the data that this staff of people has collected, um, maybe do a presentation, that'd be great. Well, also for those of you that know me, you know that I don't, uh, I don't settle well, and I may be too ambitious for my own good. And I got to thinking, like, well, if you are familiar with the circle that the city has, uh, it's just, it's like a little field, a blue circle, and you can't use it. Uh, in fact, it's a variant on the state symbol. Um, it's just not practical to use technically, aesthetically, it's frankly ugly. Um, and most importantly, it did not speak to the spirit of this community. So I got to thinking, well, maybe I can explore some rebranding opportunities. And, you know, I, I opened up Adobe Illustrator, brought, busted out my sketchbook, and started doodling ideas and having some fun with it. Um, and then one Saturday morning, and I love, love, love telling this story. So. I'm going to segue from the, the design speak for a moment. Uh, my wife was pregnant with our daughter at the time, and she had to get some, some blood testing done. It was super early on a Saturday morning in, oh man, it had to be, I don't even know when it was, it's all a blur. But um, it was super early on a Saturday morning in this little Quest Diagnostics lab uh, in the North Hills of Pittsburgh. And it was a two-hour draw, so she was going to be there for quite a while. I took my laptop, and I just started playing around, and um, I got to thinking about uh, what was going on with me personally at the time. You know, I'm, I'm an expecting father. I'm going to have a, my my family's going to be growing, and I need to really figure out my situation as best as I can, so I can have the. Uh, offer the best to, to my child, and Erin's um, doing these blood tests because she wants to have the absolute best health for our baby, and I got to thinking about like how blood is our life force, it, it sustains us, and there are things other than that that also sustain us. Um, creativity for me uh, is one of those things. If, if I could not create, I might as well crawl into a dark corner. Uh, a, of a deep, dark, cold cave and just go away forever. Um, but uh, the people here, and through my experiences, I discovered like these people are, are the life force of this community. They are creating great things. The people that I know are creating great programs or creating businesses or new opportunities, not just for the people of the community, but for my students, for everybody. Um, and that needs to be accessed, that needs to be harnessed, and the, the, the spirit of this community is its people. And I got thinking, like, well, I did not grow up here, but I can imagine myself growing up here and still being the person that I am now. Uh, I grew up in an extremely small town, one stoplight, in the middle of the Allegheny National Forest, 
And I've been able to do really great things with my career to this point, and I know that had I grown up here, uh, it would have been the same. And, you know, a lot of the folks here that, that I've met and know, um, you've started businesses, you've become citizen leaders. Um, it's just remarkable, um, the growth and the capacity and the capability. So, uh, I wanted to focus on those stories because that is what needs to be celebrated. That's what needs to be accessed and harnessed and promoted so that, you know, Dennis, with your company, you're going to inspire one of uh, the marketing students to maybe start their own practice someday. Or, you know, my design students look at the work that I've done professionally and decide, you know what, maybe I need to move in, you know, set up shop down at YBI or something like that. So, being able to uh, keep these inspirations local and then the results of that also local is, is really exciting. And, and that's how I came up with the City of You. Um, you know, you can immediately look at this and just be like, oh, that's kind of an obvious play on words. And I've gotten that, that, that feedback, and what's really funny is uh, some, some folks that have seen that, they're like, huh, I never thought of that. And to me, and this is certainly not a criticism of them, but to me it always kind of felt obvious. Because I've been able to shape and mold this idealized version of myself here. Uh, that is an enabling characteristic, that is an ambitious characteristic, but I've been able to do it, and consequently that's why you're here, and that's why I'm talking to you. So, um, the, uh, this is, the, this is the, the city of you, uh, this is the city of Youngstown, and um, it all started at 7 a.m. in a Quest Diagnostics lab where my wife was getting blood taken. So the, the, you know, the, the genesis of some of these ideas uh, isn't as you know, direct or as simple as, as you would think. Um, but like all great visual metaphors, all great art, all great design, it comes from a place of personality, it comes from within, and uh, it's exciting to be able to uh, have you guys uh, be a part of this, be a part of this work. So, um, let me talk a little bit about the, uh, the process behind getting feedback and really how we want to strategize this and implement it in the community. Um, we came up, you know, we came up with the strategy, came up with the, the logo, um, and we got to really talking about the, the marketing strategy, the communications plan behind it, and just exactly who we want to access, who we want to talk to, you know, on the technical level, that's all, that's all well and good. Um, but we still, we really needed buy-in. We, we understood that, you know, for us as designers, aesthetically, this looks good, um, it feels good to us, it feels comfortable, uh, it has a lot of potential, but, you know, we take this out into the community, the perception of it could be wildly different. People could absolutely hate this. Some of you may absolutely hate this. Um, and that's okay. Uh, I would love to talk to you, if that's the case. Um, I promise not to take it personally. Uh, <laughs> But um, we needed to we needed to vet this idea, so we came up with uh, the presentation that I will be showing you later. Um, we pitched it to uh, the mayor and his staff. We got some some really great feedback from them, and then we needed to sort of uh, pitch it to the community, pitch it to to city council, and get their feedback as well. And as much feedback as we could get, the better, because again, this was about you the people that live here, the people that make this community what it is. And uh, dissent was really important if we found it. So um, in coordination with the mayor's office, we set up some focus groups, some testing groups, and uh, we showed some of the ads. We showed uh, this logo work, the t-shirt, the stickers, thank you Brandy. Um, and it was met with really great enthusiasm and uh, a respect for what the concept of the campaign was. Um, there were some concerns regarding like, well, are you just focusing on, you know, popular people or people that are really well known in the community? Um, yes and no. Uh, I think the strategy here was we wanted to access those that were more visible so that we could access those that were not but had just as great, just as compelling stories to share. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, through the experiences that we've had today with the podcasts, 
uh, that we're going to be able to do that. Um, so the focus group testing went really well. Um, the, the presentation to council was also uh, met with great enthusiasm um, and they were, I, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I would say you guys were really excited about the, the potential and the capability of the campaign. Um, so with, with their blessing, with the folks, focus group's blessing, we uh, had to present this publicly. Uh, down at the uh, Economic Action Group, which takes place monthly, um, down at YBI most typically, um, we, we did our presentation, we did our pitch. Now, that's actually a really interesting scenario. Uh, in that, at this point in my personal life, my, my, my daughter had been born, uh, it's summer, and she's so tiny, so tiny. And my wife and I were, were asleep, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, screaming. Just complete screaming, violent, violent screaming. Um, my wife's appendix had burst on the day the most important day of this campaign. It exploded. It, and I was supposed to be down at YBI, down at the Economic Action Group, to give this presentation to the community to get this buy-in that I desperately needed. Um, and it, it just goes to show you how some things just maybe were meant to work out. Much like how this project was able to, to come into to my worldview, um, the presentation, too, was also supposed to work, albeit in a typical Thompson way. Um, I was in the parking lot of Passivant Hospital in the North Hills of Pittsburgh with my laptop and screen capture technology uh, narrating this presentation. At this point, I mean, we were in the hospital early. My wife had already had her surgery. My, my uh, parents-in-law were there with her, and I was able to get away. It was maybe two hours before this meeting. I'm sitting in my mother-in-law's SUV, windows up, no air, very, very hot, and um, I'm recording this presentation. And not only was I able to record the presentation that I'm about to show you, but I was also able to provide a supplemental piece uh, detailing the website, um, all in this car. Now, um, how do I deliver this content? Uh, for the technophiles in the audience, the, the audio here was, at, I'm sorry, the audio and video was at least four gigabytes. Um, try transferring that um, via Dropbox using public Wi-Fi at a hospital. Uh, <laughs> seemingly impossible. Um, but for, again, serendipity, just this weird reason, I was able to upload the content very quickly. I don't know how it happened. Um, and uh, Nick Cretion was able to intercept it and download it with like half an hour to spare before this meeting. Uh, then the other problem hit. Well, RJ, you've got recorded audio narration in this video. We don't have a way to, to play the audio. And I'm just like, figure it out! Because <laughs> uh, at this point, uh, after, the, after he, he was able to download it, all of the stress just just dumped right on me and I just, I actually fell asleep on the floor in my wife's hospital room. Like, hard, hard floor. I was just so out of it. Uh, it's like a, an adrenaline rush for like five hours, five, six hours straight. So, um, we were able to, to get the audio and video to Nick. He got speakers that all got set up and the meeting went off without a hitch and everyone watched the presentation and uh, over the next few days, I got a lot of, hey, this was really great, um, wonderful presentation, so I couldn't make it, love the ideas, uh, and uh, that was when I knew that uh, we really had true buy-in from the community. Uh, up until this point, I had not really received any major criticism, at least of the concept and of the goals, maybe some of the design things, which is expected. Uh, but, you know, the, the spirit of, of this brand uh, was never really criticized, which, you know, uh, was, a, was a great feeling. Now, um, 
having said that, uh, after that presentation, which you know I believe was in later summer, um, not a whole lot happened. All right. So one of the things that uh, I sort of had to reconcile was I've got a lot of motivation, I've got a lot of momentum behind this project. I want to keep going. I want to keep developing. I want to keep making. Um, and then reality of politics and city government hit. Now that's not a criticism of of, of you know how the, the city is being administered and run. It's just that's the world. Like nine to five, they turn off. I do not. Um, and that was hard to uh, that was hard to do, especially when there would be periods that where you know the uh, city would be busy with their initiatives and things that you know running the city. And I would be wanting feedback on all these little things because it's important to me that it's right, it's correct. Uh, again, being the outsider, the benefit is I have this outside perspective that um, fortunately in this case has rung true, but because I'm the outsider, I don't have this internal knowledge, I don't have these interpersonal relationships, this connectedness necessarily. Uh, so. I didn't want to uh, offend or misrepresent, you know, tread carefully. Um, so the semester ended, break went on, and now we're in uh, the, new, the new semester here, the spring semester, and um, we had a meeting with uh, the mayor and his staff yesterday, uh, and it went really, really well. Um, I can't provide the details of it, I know, total letdown. Um, but what I can say is this is moving forward, and that's the most important thing. Um, full website, uh, we're doing a campaign website where uh, everyone's stories will be shared online. We're doing podcasts today. Uh, some of the folks that have participated in those podcasts, the council members, uh, for example, Jocelyn, who left. Uh, <laughs> She, uh, they participate in the podcast. So we have a rich multimedia campaign that's going to, you know, affect a lot of people. Your stories will inspire someone down the line to maybe get involved in government, uh, or start their own business, or work with youth. Um, and that exposure is, is amazing. So we've got uh, podcasts, we've got video, we're hitting social media, we've got the websites. Um, what we're looking at really is a well-strategized campaign that, for me, I want to last for 20 years. Now, hopefully at that point you won't be sick of seeing this, but uh, the idea here is that the campaign has just as much life in it as the people in the community, and I know in this community it is full of life, um, and we can keep this going for a very long time, and that's remarkable. So. Um, Having said all that, um, I, I, I'll welcome some, some questions for a few minutes if you have any, and then I want to show you uh, the presentation that uh, I gave to council, that I gave to the focus groups, uh, as well as show you some, some new work. So lay it on me, what do you got? If I have this brand mark, for example, they also have their own, but they, they can use this, but it's set in those darker green colors. Um, much like how any of the neighborhoods can have this t-shirt in their specified colors, we want businesses, like Friends Coffee, for example, they've expressed interest in this. They want to have a brown t-shirt with uh, a design, with that design on the front, and on the back they want their logo and maybe a message. And, and my uh, correspondence with them is, yes, absolutely, let's do it. Um, we'll design it for free, you pay for the t-shirts, and then you can sell them. And then ideally speaking, and this may be ideally, but uh, they give back a portion of what they make to uh, the campaign, or they donate it to a uh, local nonprofit, uh, or however that would work. That isn't really my domain. But um, that's sort of what the strategy is. So, to really answer your question, when these are available, you can have this one, and when all the other 50 different variations are available, you can have all 50 of those too. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. Yes? What do you need from us, and how can we get involved? Um, you know, uh, I'll ask for any and all participation or time that you're willing to give to me. 
Um, you just need to contact me and uh, we work it out. Uh, really, um, I'm looking for uh, folks that are interested in utilizing this <clears throat> in, in specific ways, interested in, in pushing it forward, contributing to it, not just in a, in a, in a you know, a philosophical sense, but a meaningful, hands-on approach, like doing the podcast or doing video or things like that, um, or be willing to expand the campaign beyond what it is currently. Um, I think that's the best way that it will sustain itself and grow. Um, so I'd say contact me, let's get some coffee, and we'll figure it out. Um, right now, I think we're looking at a mid, I'd say early to mid-August launch of everything. But, I've been known to be wrong before, and that very well may be a date that gets pushed back. But, uh, I expressed that the weather was very, very important to me in this campaign. So, you may see this branding sporadically throughout some of the summer events downtown or in other parts of the community. Um, there will be some, hopefully some type of presence, but not a full-on presence. So, uh, I would say we got some time to figure it out. And I would welcome anyone, uh, regardless of, of your position in the community, if you're a student, business owner, so on and so forth, anyone and everyone is welcome. And if I can get you in front of a mic, even better. Because uh, you all have amazing stories to tell one way or another. And uh, myself and our intrepid host, David, will work very hard to pull those stories out of you. I had to embarrass you, I'm sorry. Imagine you Sam. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? No? Okay, well should you have some for me, uh, feel free to throw them my way, call, text, email, I can make my information available to you. Uh, otherwise, you can catch me here afterwards. Um, and on this note, before I jump into the presentation, um, we are doing two podcasts after this. <clears throat> the, uh, the third uh, is going to be with Dominic Marchionda, which is going to be around 2, 2.15. <coughs> Dominic's a swell guy, <coughs> pardon me, who uh, is connected to everybody and is definitely uh, a motivating factor in this campaign, in the grant work that I'm doing with him, as well as every other project that everyone in this room has going on. Uh, and then the, the fourth podcast is going to be around 3 o'clock, that's with Jennifer Roller from the Ween Foundation. Um, I have not met Jennifer in person, but I am familiar with who she is, her reputation, and a little bit of her background here in the community, and uh, I'm very happy to say that she repositioned her schedule to, to meet with us and, and do this podcast. Uh, so those are the four. <coughs> Pardon me. Yes, sir? Where, where do we subscribe to the podcast? Good question. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make the, the podcast audio files available on the McDonough site. We're going to make them available on the YSU Art site as well as the city website. Um, and eventually, with David's uh, kind help, we're going to put those on Apple. So eventually you can just download those directly to your podcasting app on your device. So those are the, those are the uh, destinations presently. Uh, and I don't know when they'll come out, but relatively soon. I think you guys are pretty good. Okay, cool. All right, well, let me jump into this, and uh, by all means, if, if uh, you have trouble seeing because of this interference, uh, feel free to move forward or uh, walk directly up to it. You can put your eyes directly on the screen if you have to. Um, and I'm just going to sort of detail the... Um... Yeah, 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 come on over. I'm just going to detail uh, relatively briefly the... Uh, this is the presentation, and uh, this will eventually be uh, available online um, for, for, for you folks to, to consume and check out. Um, I, I'm really into this uh, breaking spaces kind of thing, which is why I just said, you know what, throw it on the wall, and uh, we'll just interact with it as it is. So, um, thanks Leslie. Uh, <clears throat> this is the, uh, the presentation. So we talked about the inspiration behind the campaign, the concept, various applications, and ultimately how it's sustainable and how it moves into the future. Um, the work that we've done is uh, a direct uh, sort of opposition to what exists. So 
you're familiar with the Cleveland mark. This is the city of Columbus. Uh, this is set in a typeface called Gotham. Uh, some of you may be familiar with it from uh, the Obama campaign. <clears throat> Uh, and then up here we've got Cincinnati, and I like to joke about Cincinnati's brand mark in that you could cover your hand over the word city of Cincinnati, and it could be a logo for a bank. It could be a logo for um, a sporting goods company. It could practically be anything. Um, so this is sort of what we're working with in, in our, our neighbor cities. This is the wonderful seal of, of uh, Youngstown, seal, seal of the city of Youngstown. You can see there's, some, there's a field, there's some uh, mountains here with a bright, beautiful sunburst. Um, I think everyone ha that has experienced this has experienced some level of difficulty looking at it or working with it on some level or, or another. Um, <clears throat> this sets the standard, okay? If, if I were an outsider, which I am, looking to move here, and I see this seal on the city website, I may not be as inspired to move here as I would, say, Cincinnati, or, well, not Cincinnati, but Cleveland, okay? But, um, you know, responding to this, we still needed something with personality, but was clean, legible. Uh, was professionally done and had a, uh, a strong presence to it. So, uh, and I'm sorry to keep going back to this. Uh, if you look down here, this is called a, this is just a clean sans serif, all right? Not a lot of uh, ornamentation or decoration to it. The Cleveland mark is very decorated, all right? It's actually illustrated. Um, and then the mark up here for Cincinnati is what it is, okay? Um, what we're using here with the city of Youngstown is called a <clears throat> slab serif. Slab serif has more presence to it. It has a stronger, pardon me, foundation to it. Um, plus, it's also evocative of the um, steel industry past. It's important to recognize the past as you're moving into the future. Uh, but that's a whole other two hour long uh, lecture that I will give at a later time, not to you guys. Okay, so uh, build yourself up. This campaign is about defining Youngstown. It's about celebrating Youngstown uh, as the intricate, complex, interwoven combinations of and connections of people and experiences that it always has been and will be. This idea of, of building yourself up, build yourself here. Uh, citizen leaders are building great ideas, building programs, building businesses. This verb, build, all right, it's active, um, there's, there's a movement to it, there's momentum, excuse me, momentum that is worth uh, exploring. Color, I am a huge, huge, huge fan of color. Um, and anytime I can figure out a proper, appropriate, strategic way to implement color in a design that does not otherwise require it is a really great challenge for me. And I'm really excited about how we're going to use color, not only as a metaphor for diversity in the community, but also uh, as, a, as a technical means to uh, presenting this campaign work in different neighborhoods and representing different neighborhoods, uh, so on and so forth. You've seen that. Some slight variations on a theme here. Um, works against this dark blue, which is just a little bit darker than this shade of blue on the t-shirt, works in black and white. Any good logo system has to work in any orientation. Well, not diagonally, because that's just weird. But uh, horizontally, vertically, in full color, in black and white, and against an inverse or variable background uh, that could be any color. So does this seal, um, sorry, not seal, does this solution work against a pink background? Yes. Are we going to use pink? No. Um, but it could work. Uh, this particular design here uh, has been really met with enthusiasm. Of course, it's the same that's on the t-shirt. Um, this is just a more concise way of, of stating uh, what the campaign is all about. The city of you, Youngstown, Ohio. Um, someone was making fun of me earlier saying, are we all bright, beautiful, shining stars here? Um, it is important to access and acknowledge uh, uh, 
some level of, of patriotism, but in regards to this, it, frankly, it, first and foremost for me, was a motif that was able to break this text from this text. Essentially, one idea, two ideas, this separates the two, but in, in doing so, um, you're getting both messages uh, across. This is some, uh, some applications, some ephemera, um, business cards. So a nice heavy stock, like 110 pound uh, mat with some weight to it, some texture to feel great in your hands. That's a card you want to give out to people. Um, you can tell I'm a huge nerd uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh, how does this logo work with all the different departments, economic development, city council, public works, so on and so forth? Across the board, it works. Um, and in fact, uh, the city's CTO, uh, Rick Deek, told me the other day that they have uh, this solution implemented on their phone systems. So their, their phones have little screens and the logo's already on there. So I know if it works there, it can pretty much work anywhere. This, alright, this is wonderful and I'm really, really looking forward to working with this solution. So. Each of the neighborhoods here in Youngstown, of which not all are listed here, uh, that was one of the complaints from the focus groups, uh, not, all the, not, not everyone is represented, but conceptually we can change the color systems of each of these neighborhoods uh, to match something that is more appropriate for them, that gives them their own distinct personality and presence within this larger system. It's very gestalt, okay? Uh, these are the, you know, some of the parts here. These are the parts. Uh, and it's great to be able to have these color combinations work for all these different neighborhoods. Now, the logistical, totally not practical thing I have to deal with is how do we get some of these neighborhoods to agree to a color scheme that is less palatable? Uh, like yellow and orange, for example. I would never actually push out there. Uh, but, uh, that's something I'm going to have to figure out, and for those of you uh, neighborhood leaders, uh, I am obligated to say this, Pat Kerrigan called green and black, um, but I can move them on to other colors if you want to call it, okay? Um, but this is, this is exciting. Some of the neighborhoods already have their own logos. For example, Rocky Ridge uh, Neighborhoods Associ Neighbors Association has their own logo. Uh, of course, the university does. We can match that so they look well together. What's important is that the design of this solution is fixed and does not change, but the colors can vary. Youngstown Design Works, the program that I run here for the students, um, we branded Crandall Park North and uh, Old Furnace, and I'm really excited about uh, that design, hopefully I can show it to you here momentarily. We don't want to take away the, the, the unique uh, logo solutions that some of these neighborhood association groups have already built. We don't want to take that away, we want to add to it where possible and practical. So, um, there's our intrepid host. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, David was uh, a very willing uh, guinea pig for this campaign. So, I, what's that? Very. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I just did it without your permission. Um, you're a very forgiving person. Um, and here, here are some of the the, the first round of ideas. Uh, these expressions here. It, it, here's the narrative. Okay, I can speaking as David. I can play live music, start a record label, go on tour, build an indie cinema, be a dad in Youngstown. Here's his name, here's his occupation, or his program, or what he does, okay? Uh, he can do these things in the city of New Youngstown, Ohio. That's the basic formula. Who he is, what he does, where he does it. That's the story. It's sort of a triptych, okay, a trilogy, and that's it. Over here, uh, I have an example of two of my former students who have since graduated. We can learn, design, graduate, own a business in Youngstown, City View. All right, so it's a quick, digestible message. It's very on point, but it also focuses on the people that make this community what it is. 
Some more examples, so you might end up seeing David's face on a light post banner. Um, this design actually, as pitched, is not going to work practically, so we'll see some, some variations on that. Uh, this could be anyone. I would ideally love to see banners throughout all the neighborhoods in the city and have some of those pictures reflect people in those neighborhoods. I think that would just be an amazing way to customize and personalize everything. Banners, uh, wall, uh, wall signage, environmental signage, you can ignore this. Uh, this was a variation on a theme that uh, Lee Schwebel came up with uh, in a conversation with him, uh, the City of Youth. Uh, this actually also came out of our focus groups, and this has a ton of potential for uh, our, our, uh, our, our friends in the elementary schools, middle schools, so on and so forth. I can see t-shirts being made out of this. Um, how does this ad look in other communities? All right? One of the things that I sort of talked to, to Kostler about frequently, and most recently, was about trying to get these guys, these app developers from Sweden, into YBI. How, how are we communicating what Youngstown is to the rest of the world, and should we be doing that? So what does this look like in other communities, bigger cities? How can we attract uh, Silicon Valley thinking here Granted, we have some of that now, but how can we attract some of those businesses to start here? And maybe that's advertising <coughs> in other cities. Uh, places of commerce, freestanding banners, variations on those colors, uh, highway billboards, bus stop ads, build yourself up. I mean, the, the possibilities here are rather uh, endless. Some additional ephemera, posters, bags. Uh, Wayne, if you're curious, the bags are forthcoming. I know you want to settle down you know, a little side back there. Um, more t-shirts. I mean, we could just keep going. And then here's a picture of uh, some, of the, some of the YBI folks, Dominic, Brandy, whom uh, wore this t-shirt on the day that I was supposed to present. Um, all of the folks here, and of course elsewhere, that, that were involved in this project one way or another, just been extremely uh, supportive, and it's, it's so exciting to have them on board. So, keep moving forward. Here's what I've been doing recently. Um, I've submitted a lot of conference proposals, nationally uh, and internationally, to speak about this campaign. Uh, specifically, rebranding a city in revival, that's the basic premise, okay? Um, this particular graphic here is an infographic based off of some of the data that was provided by Urban Regional Studies. Now, what's cool about this is that this is all animated, okay? Uh, so, the, the city view would fade in, the city would grow out of this bar here, the text would fade in, and then you could actually click on these different units of measurement and what it would show is instead of a bar it would show federal uh, all the buildings on federal illustrated growing so it's a sort of a, uh, an apt metaphor saying this is why people are coming downtown and the more people come downtown you see that block grow you see that city grow so that's one of the things I'm working on right now and here's a rough mock-up of that so these obviously aren't the buildings on the federal. I have a student helping me with this. But you click on that, it's going to grow out to the percentage that's listed here. So it's just kind of a, a clever little way to add some interactivity to otherwise boring information. Sorry for my info files. Um, <clears throat> and then this is the most exciting part. This is something that I came up with right around the time that I thought of the podcast idea. With the podcast that we're doing, we're asking folks, how has Youngstown transformed you, and how are you in turn transforming it? And uh, this, is a, this is a photo that was taken by one of my photography students, and juxtaposing this in a double exposure solution, uh, the, the person and the city, the cityscape, being able to show that simultaneously. Uh, it's sort of a, it's, it's a clever delivery on um, this metaphor that we're trying to offer. And it's such a quick narrative. Um, so I, I've been really, really into this. This is an example of uh, one of my former students, Jared McCartney. Um, 
And again, these are just mock-ups. Now, these look a little bit more distressed. They have some texture to it. We're not, I'm not trying to suggest that any of this stuff is grungy or anything like that, but uh, I want it to have texture uh, because not everything is hyper clean and corporate and white. Uh, there's some grit here, there's some texture uh, that I want to uh, elaborate on and, and express. Jocelyn Parker, who did one of our, who did, just did our last podcast, this is a mock up of her that I did just this morning. Uh, so not only is she uh, working with youth, but she's a musician too. So she's doing more than one really great thing here. And uh, this has so much personality to it, so much, uh, so much character. I, I just love it. And one of the things about double exposures is you really got to look at the details. So um, right here, there's actually a silhouette of her walking down Federal past Joe Max. Uh, and it's just, it's subtle and I love it. And then uh, finally, this was the mark that Dana Mooney uh, made. She's an alum now uh, for the Old Forest District and being able to create uh, solutions like this uh, for the neighborhoods is something that we absolutely love doing. Uh, so what's great about this and to book and this entire experience is that in 2012, I had this opportunity to rebrand a neighborhood. Uh, several years later, I got an opportunity to create this work. Uh, this is a legacy project for me and without a doubt will mean the most to me out of any other project that I do professionally. And for our students being able to do this now before they graduated, uh, they're already hitting my dream. And I'm so glad that this opportunity has enabled things like this to happen. Uh, I can think of no greater thing. So uh, that's all I got. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it.